Okay. New going. What's uh, what's new this week? Okay, we've got some wires. Yeah, these wires are connected to a sensor. This is um, people really like these centered sensors. They're good for um, outdoor environmental sensing. It's a temperature humidity sensor. This one has an SHT30 in it, which is nice. It's a true I squared C sensor. Um, I'll show this off on the overhead because it has this um, centered. Uh, metal casing which protects it from you know water like air can get through it but you're not going to be able to get water through it which is kind of nice um, so you can actually uh, even dunk this underwater if you have to not for long periods of time but it can be exposed and then this is this uh, the sensor here and you can see it's epoxied and there's like a teeny little dot here you can barely see where the sensor is and then it just has the power and data lines brought out uh, so that you can um, connect to them and uh, yeah so we just have more of these environmental sensors. People like them. Next up, these are some buttons, and it's really hard to explain these buttons. It's a little frustrating because they're very, very nice, but you can't tell because it's a photo and it's something that's very tactile. So these tactile switches are just like normal tactile switches, a six millimeter standard tact switches that you're used to, but the top button part is made out of soft silicone. So they have this really nice, soft, squishy feeling, but they also have the clicky, tactile button so yeah here you can you you try and you tell me what you think okay but yeah there you feel it's that a, it's ooh. soft is it nice just a little bit different it's just a little different it's kind of soft it feels a little bit like those like these touch point mice but it's a little squishy we replace paul's regular buttons with these special soft clickier buttons let's see if he notices it's it is nice though. silky on my skin it's silky it's soft <laughs> it's a lovely button it's hard to explain but just believe me it's very soft and it's got wow. a nice grippy feel to it so it's a nice upgrade we have the surface mount version in the pie badge so if you have a pie badge and you're like how did you get that nice soft button feeling i've actually never seen these in the u.s before um but we've, uh, we were buying some other buttons and i was like what are these um in a catalog and I, I picked them up and i'm like these are amazing so this is a translucent clear and you get 20 of them um they're just really luxurious aren't they luxurious yeah you can hardly see the dent in the end of my fingers I normally know. that's like a millimeter deep i know from from the, no but it's soft soft okay, okay. Next up, we have some sci-fi buttons. These are uh, 1960s style sci-fi control panel buttons. Uh, That's where we've seen buttons like this before. And uh, they're triangular, but like why call them triangular when you can call them something else? And these are, um, these are basically like uh, panel mount buttons. And we have these in like round and square, but now we have them in triangle. And you can take six of these and make them into a hexagon, which is even better. Um, but they look cool. They have an LED built into them. They use, uh, they're basically standard uh, arcade type buttons. They have the arcade contacts. I'll show off a couple of these on the overhead because they look cool when lit up. I will say that the button, the LEDs that they come with, these are the 12 volt uh, LEDs. They're not diffused and I recommend getting a diffused LED and replacing it. Um, that's the only downside to these is they're not, they don't have a really good even diffusion. Like they're a little bit, they have a little bit of a hot spot and I feel like if you got a diffused LED, it would be more diffused. Cause yeah, so this is white. But yeah, the switch and the button are separate. So this is the switch contacts and these are the LED contacts. And then they're, they're, they've got this uh, round thing here that you can panel mount it onto whatever you want, like almost like an inch thick. So if you have wood, that's fine, plastic. And then let's try this blue one. Did I get it backwards? I got it backwards. Let's try it frontwards. Yeah, so this is blue. So again, it has a white LED in, and I would re recommend replacing that with the diffused LED. You'll get a much more even illumination for this button. But again, we've got red, and we've got green and yellow. So we've got all the different colors in sci-fi triangle style. Make your control panel look real good. Okay. Next up. Next up, we've got some JST SH cables. These are quick compatible. So if you have uh, spark fun boards that have quick, or other boards that have a quick connector, um, we actually really like these uh, contacts. They're only one millimeter pitch, but they feel really great. So we have um, them in um, plug to uh, plain 0.1 inch male headers. And we also have a cable that's cable to cable uh, JST SH. So they're one millimeter pitch and the colors match like the standard quick coloring, which is black for ground, red for power. And then I think data is yellow and clock is blue or maybe it's the other way around. Um, but you can daisy chain quick boards, and if you want to connect them to a breadboard, uh, you can use the uh, first cable for that. Okay. 
slide pots. You've asked for them. We got them. This is a 75 millimeter slide pot. Um, and we got them with a little nub on them. Also, nice silicone nub here. Feel that nub. What do you think about that nub? Good nub. Nice, good nubbins. <laughs> he agrees. Um, so it feels like trying to figure yeah. out where, where I'm going. 100% of Paul's agree. <laughs> it's a, and it's got a little white marking too. So this, if, if you want to panel mount this as well, that could be really nice. There's a little panel mount screw here, but I think you would you know, maybe glue it or, or attach to a PCB that's then attached on. But there's a little nub that comes on it and it's press fit and I don't want to remove it because this will fly off. And it's got like a little velveteen protector here. And it's a standard uh, 10K linear. Uh, I think, you know, this is the, you know, pin one is one side, then uh, pin three is the other side, and then two is the uh, wiper. So it uses a divider or a, a, resi a um, variable resistor. And, you know, it's got that slide action. You want to, you know, sliders, you see these in mixers. It's also great for like robotic control. And, you know, they're a little bit easier to see where you are compared to rotational ones. Like sometimes with rotation, it's hard. Um, for me, at least, I don't I don't map very well from rotation to percentage. But with this, it's like oh, that's halfway and that's three quarters. It's a lot easier for me to see, and for some people, it's easier to move as well. Do you know have side pots? People ask for them. Now yeah. we have them. Next up, uh, we have now a combo kit. Um, a few weeks ago, we put in the 4H Clover kit. If you'd like to grow your own clovers, and uh, this is what you get: you get a circuit playground, a battery pack with batteries. A nail, it's a nice stainless steel nail, one alligator clip that's in 4-H green, and um, a clover kit. So you can plant your clovers and then turn this into a STEM educational activity where not only are you planting clovers, but you're measuring the temperature and uh, soil moisture using the Circuit Playground Express, and we've got some guides on how to do that. So you can take, if you have a 4-H club and you want to get to some STEM activities, um, it's an agricultural group that we have here in the U.S. Okay. Uh, it, this could be a nice way of planting something and then also learning how to code with make code or circuit python. Next up. Next up, flexible ink. And some nice nails too. Look at these nice, some nice. Well, thank you. I had them done I, just for this one. I didn't look at those jewels. Um, so this is a flexible e-ink. I won't, I'll give some warnings. So this is a very cool product. It's a flexible e-ink display and I do have one here and you can see it's very thin. It's another thing, it's not just flexible, it's extremely thin. So if you want to have ink that is, is a little, you know, you can bend it around something. I'll say something, these are delicate. You have to be very careful with them. Even though that video, by the way, that video, it's an animated GIF and it's repeating. So don't actually do that. Don't sit there and like constantly flex it because um, you can get cracks. Also don't flex it while it's updating because you'll actually get weird pixels. So you can bend it after it's been updated. So you can see like this, I have a little my control over here that's actually doing the updating. But we have a uh, code for this, um, graphics code, so you can uh, display from uh, a bitmap, you can display text, you can display um, lines and stuff. And yeah, you can flex it. I'm going to um, remove it from this little extender so I, it doesn't update for sure. But yeah, you can bend it um a bit and uh, yeah i just want to be like super clear to people i think you can make this into like a bracelet you can't bend it and if you crack it you know if you if you bend it enough that it forms a crease you'll you'll get a, a crack this is not a galaxy fold this is Wait, not a galaxy even fold. A galaxy fold even it's then it wasn't a galaxy fold so you yeah. do have to be careful it's very cool it does work it is flexible i think what you could do is if you have like a 3d you know you want to make a bracelet you could or a watch you could 3d print it and then put it in and then keep it that way. Like it stays in that position. I wouldn't put it into a project where it's constantly being flexed because I think eventually you'll get cracks and you'll be, you'll be sad. Um, and also just be careful over here, this is the chip, so you don't wanna crack it. Also, it doesn't bend this way. It only bends this way. So as long as everyone who's getting these is aware of the, you know, what the limitations are, it is a flexible ink display and it is, at a very reasonable price, you can now get these and use them in hobbyist projects. Okay. And the star of the show tonight, besides Paul, Lady Ada, and our community, is, speaking of crowd supply, this, this is, is a crowd, crowd supply product. Yeah. This is the NETV2 from Bunny. Um, I wish I knew enough about it to really intelligently talk about it, but basically it's a Raspberry Pi computer that has an FPGA add-on hat that does HDMI overlay and um, possible, it's not decoding, it encodes on top of the stream. 
So even if you have an HDMI stream, especially if it's an encrypted stream, and you want to have overlay like a, a, a either a bar at the bottom or an advertisement or interactive art or whatever that is on top of the HDMI, you're not reading the HDMI signal. You're just writing over it. This is uh, an ex exciting and interesting um, technological and legal product <laughs> that yeah. can do that. Yeah, basically, if you, if you like the idea of, of open video, being able to do more things on the TVs, yeah. that, you know, one of the, I think, example projects that will probably make more sense is uh, Magic Mirrors. You yeah. can play a video on the Magic Mirror, but then also put, like, your weather data on top of it. Correct. But it's your, it's whatever you want to Or if do. you want, like, a bar at the bottom that has information, like, maybe yeah. it's displaying could be TV. Tw Twitter feeds. It has feeds, or it yeah. could have, you know, chats that are happening in the background. So these are some of the projects I've done. So basically, if you know, if that's what you know you want, this is the product yeah. for you. And this is kind of the only product that does it. And it's totally open source. Um, but it's an amazing job. The NETV one, it's a couple of years old. It, you know, we're still going to carry a couple of them. But if for people who want to take it to the next level, this is, yeah. you know, very fast FPGA. It's also like if you just want to do FPGA hacking and you have a Raspberry Pi this for is... Linux a subsystem, um, that's also a great product. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to use it for video. It is designed for that. But it is also a very powerful, well-designed. It's from Bunny. Platform. Basically, it's like a super cool Linux computer that probably breaks laws that people don't even know yet. That we don't <laughs> even, or maybe it doesn't. Who knows? We'll go to court. But this is the thing, yeah. It's the, it, yeah. it can overlay on the HDCP stuff without That's decoding correct. or it touching it. It doesn't decode it. It overwrites it. Yeah. Which is. Maths. And he was kind of like, I want, yeah, it's basically math. And he was like, okay, I want to like see if this goes to court, but it hasn't been. I, I tried to write about this and do an analogy, and and I I actually stopped. Because I couldn't, it's like if you were to send a letter through the postal system and you were able to like open up the letter. But without, you're not reading it, but you're not reading it, it, but putting something in and they still and get it. It's like a carbon copy and, and you rub over it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't so know. So it's a really neat thing that you'd think that videos, you'd think a TV that you own, you'd be able to put something on top of the TV signal. No. No, Wait. the HTP seat. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't. And this can actually do that. Right. Okay. And with that is uh, new products. Thank you, everybody. Right. You want to do a recap? No, 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 no.